Hello everyone. Today we're looking at the problem separate squares, which was question two in bi-weekly contest 150. So the question reads that we're given a 2D integer array squares. Each square has three elements, its x-coordinate, y-coordinate, and its length. And this coordinate is the bottom left point and the side length of that square. What we want to find is the minimum y-coordinate value of a line, which is horizontal, where the total area of the squares above the line and below the line are equal. And answers can be within 10 to the negative 5 of the actual answer. So this means that we don't only have to try integers, we have to try all the decimal places in between up to 5 decimal places. One important note here is that the squares may overlap. And if they do, the areas should be counted multiple times. And you'll see what that means. Looking at this example, we have two squares. So there's one with its bottom left at 0, 0, and a length of 2. And then one with its bottom left at 1, 1, and a length of 1. And you'll see that in this case, the squares do overlap. So you'll see that this blue square overlaps with this portion of the red square. But when we're doing this calculation, we should count the area of both. So we want to count the area underneath this blue square for the red square, but then also count the blue square as well. So if there are overlaps, we are going to make sure we count them multiple times. And here the answer is 1.16667. And this is the lowest possible line where both above and below has equal area. This is because for the red square, we'll see we take 7 sixths of it, which is from here up to the line, times 2 to get the area, plus 1 sixth of the blue, this little area right here, and that gives us 15 over 6. Similarly, above the line, we get 5 over 6 times 2 for the red, and then 5 sixths of the blue, which gives us the same exact output. So one important thing to understand for this problem is how we can split a square. And this is going to be important because we know that uh, our answer may not just be an integer value, right? It may be any value in between. So in this example, we're looking at the line 2.25. And let's see how we can split any square which might intersect with that line. So we see here we have a square that is rooted at 2, 1 right here and with a length of 1. So what do we do to split this square? Well, to get the bottom portion, what would we do? Well, we know that this line is 2.25. And we know that this length right here is equal to this line right here, which is where we're cutting it, and wherever it is rooted at, right? So we can know that this is rooted at 2. So this gives us 0.25. This means that this line segment right here is 0.25. On the other hand, we have to know what this portion is above, right? So what we can do is say, let's take this top point. But remember, we don't know exactly where the square is going to end, right? All we're given is this point. But we know that if we take that point, let's say the y value, and we add the length, so in his case, we have two plus 1, we know what that point is, 3. It goes all the way up to y value of 3. Then from 3, we can subtract 2.25 to get 0.75, right? So using whatever value we have here plus what we are given, that means that we could know how to split this y value up and make sure that we calculate the area properly. So then to keep in mind as we go forward, this is something we're going to do a lot of. So how do we actually solve the question? Well, we want to find the lowest. So you may think, okay, let's just start at zero and let's just do the calculation. So we could try splitting at zero, see what's above and below. And if it doesn't equal, we'll just keep going up until we find one. Well, we could do this. The issue with this is that this will take way too long. So we know that the y value can go up to 10 to the nine. And our length can also go up to 10 to the nine. So this is already a huge number. We have to try out all of these different possibilities. But one thing to remember is we're not only trying the integer values, right? Between 0 and 1, there are 10 to the 5 values we could potentially try. And why is that? So we could try not only 0, but 0 0.00001, and then 0 0.00002, 0003, and so on, right? So we really can't try every single 
possible value because it's going to be way too many and we'll get time limit exceeded. So then how do we actually solve this efficiently? So whenever you have this kind of problem that wants you to find the minimum value or maximum value, a good thing to think about is binary search. And why we use binary search is because with a problem like this, we could try a value and then in that instance, we could essentially cut out half of the values above or below that point. So what's that look like? So let's say we make a cut all the way up here. And I won't actually calculate out the values, but let's just say we try this line and we see that this area up here is definitely smaller than this area down here. So in this case, what do we do? Well, we know that we don't want to move up, right? Because if we say, try this line now here, well, we're only going to get a smaller and smaller portion above. But we, we really know that we need to add more area to this side, right? So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to binary search because we can cut out half of our search space every time. So for example, when we try this line and we see that this area is smaller, we know that we have to move our line down. So we can then move it down to let's say one, for example. So now we could try the line at one, but we'll see when we do this, that down here is actually smaller than up here. So this is no longer smaller, this is now larger. So again, we'll say, well, what can we do here? We don't want to move this line down anymore, right? Because now we're just going to get smaller and smaller down here. So we actually have to move this line up. So really you'll see that at each step, we're cutting out a huge portion of the search space that we have to look at. So even though we have a huge number of possible values, each time we're cutting out half of them. And this is really helpful and why binary search is super helpful for this kind of case. So how our binary search will actually work is that at each stage, we're going to pick a value. This will just be the midpoint between whatever left and right values we're currently looking at. So we're gonna pick a value for our line. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate through all of the squares and we're going to calculate what portion is above the line and what portion is below the line. So if above the line we have more area, that means we have to move the line up, right? Because we have to make the below portion bigger. And by moving the line up, this means that that portion will become more in line with what's above the line. If the above is not bigger, then we have to move the line down. So we're gonna do this until our left and right values become extremely close, until they become 0 0.00001 away from each other. And once they are at this point, this means that we have found the value that we're looking for. So I want to cover the three cases that we have to consider when we're actually calculating the area of the squares. So the first case is that if our Y plus our L value is less than or equal to our mid. So here, this would be our midline right here. And then our Y is here. And then our length represents this value. So you'll see that even if we add Y plus L, it's less than or equal to our mid value. And this means that all the area should go below. On the other hand, if our y is greater than or equal to our mid, this means that the entire square falls above the midline. And then the final case is where neither of these are true, and that means that we have to split the line using that splitting logic that we talked about earlier. So overall, the time complexity here will be O of log n, and Binary search is log n because at each point, we are cutting down half of the search space we're looking at and cutting it in half means that we're doing a logarithmic kind of function. But each time we do binary search, we're also going to do n work. And what is that work? Well, what we're doing is that we are going through all of the squares and calculating the areas. So every time we're doing a binary search operation, we we'll also have to iterate through all of the squares just to get that area and see which way we should move. So overall, we can convert this to O of N log N, N being the length of our squares and then log N for our binary search. Let's hop over to the code and see exactly how this works. So the first thing that I do here is set up the boundaries for my binary search. So I set my left as zero and my right value is two times 10 to the nine. And how did I come to this value? Well, let's think about it. So the Y value can be up to 10 to the nine. 
And then on top of that, the length of the square can be up to 10 to the 9. So really what would happen in the worst possible case is that our square's bottom left point would be at 10 to the 9, but then extend another 10 to the 9 on top of that. So if we're adding two 10 to the 9s together, it's really the same as in multiplying it by 2. So I'm setting this maximum value of 2 times 10 to the 9 to account for both the possible maximum y position as well as the length of the square. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go while the difference between my right and my left rounded to five decimal places is greater than this value. So really, we're not expecting the values to become ever entirely equal at some point, but just extremely close. So what we do is we find the midpoint between our left and right. Then we're going to set two variables to track the area above and below this midline. Then we iterate through all the squares. This is the case where it falls completely below the line. This means that the bottom left point where it is rooted plus the length of the square are still less than or equal to that midline. So we add everything to the below area. The other case is where y is greater than or equal to mid, so we add that to the above. The final case is the most interesting where we have to split. So we're going to set my width equal to the length of the square, and then calculate my bottom height and my top height for the square that I am splitting. So the bottom height, we take the mid and subtract y, and y is the bottom left point. So this gets us the distance between the bottom left point and the midpoint. Then the top height is where it's rooted at y, plus the length minus the midpoint. So really what we're doing here is we're taking one of the sides and we're splitting it based on that horizontal line. And this gets us the bottom and top portions of that line. Then what we do is to the below portion, we add the bottom height times the width. And to the above, we add the top height times the width. Then we're just going to round these out in case there's any issues with decimal places. And then if our above is greater than below, this means that we have to move the line up. So we're going to move our left value to the mid. Otherwise, we have to move the line down. So that's where we move our right downwards. Finally, we take the average of these two points. And we're just going to take that, divide it by 2, and round it to five decimal places. So let's submit and make sure that it works. And it does work. Hopefully this is helpful and it made sense. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. It really helps. And thank you for watching.